the Spotlight, our first MBA virtual fair hosted by GMAT Club. Um, as I've said before many, many times, we will have top schools joining us every single day to talk about their programs. We'll also have admission experts weighing in on your profiles and also student panels talking about their daily MBA experiences. So I wanted to take a moment and introduce you to Anthony and Nicole from Berkeley High School of Business. Nicole, why don't you take it away? Hi, everybody. My name is Nicole Faraday. Um, thank you, Suvik and the GMAT Club for putting this event together. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining this morning or where, whatever time it is, where, wherever you are. Um, I'm the Associate Director for the Full-Time MBA Admissions Program, um, and I'm joined by my colleague, um, who will lead us through a presentation, um, and I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, everyone. My name is Anthony Witten, and I'm also an Associate Director of Admissions at Berkeley Haas. Thank you for joining us today. I'm going to roll through a couple of different pieces in this presentation. I'm going to talk about why you might be thinking about an MBA, why you should pick Haas to complete that MBA, and then ultimately what the student experience is at Haas, but then also what the application experience is going to be in applying to Haas. So I appreciate you joining us. Uh, many of you have probably already started thinking about uh, why you might want an MBA, that perhaps it's to gain more knowledge and skills, explore a new career path, looking to have a positive impact, or ultimately you just wanna become a better leader. And ultimately we are here from Haas to say, well, the time to do that is now, and you should do that in the Haas community. Uh, one of the things I would say that I think is a hallmark of being a part of Haas is our focus on innovation. And that particularly in thinking about our location and being in uh, the Bay Area, that we are at a hub of entrepreneurship and innovation, and that we have access to opportunities in one of the largest economies in the world. And that as you think about Haas, it's a place where you can feel safe in taking risks and, and looking for opportunities and kind of helping you to grow. So as you think about what it means to be a part of the Haas community, uh, we really ground ourselves in our defining leadership principles, question status quo, conference without attitudes, do not always beyond yourself. That both in thinking about the application process, as well as also in thinking about what it means to be a member of the Haas community, are really founded and grounded in, in our defining leadership principles, as you see here on the slide. In addition, our student experience is really important that at Haas, we firmly believe in having a student-centered experience. So many of the competitions, many of the trips, all of the student clubs are all student-led and really have a student at the heart of the work that happens on campus. And as you think about what it means to be a part of our community, that Haas is really uh, focused on elevating diversity, equity, and inclusion, that over the last three years, Haas has doubled down on its efforts to do its own uh, self-reflection and awareness about where it sits and looking at issues of equity inclusion, as well as also in putting a special focus on growing and strengthening our equity fluent leadership area of emphasis, as well as also really thinking about where our Center for Equity, Gender and Leadership sits in terms of, in, in terms of developing this conversation of diversity, equity, inclusion within industry. In addition to that, and a part of our admissions process, uh, we partner with a number of national organizations in order to facilitate growth and inclusion in our community. Uh, we partner with the Forte Foundation, the Consortium, MLT, the National Black, Black MBA Association, as well as also reaching out MBA. And that as, as you can see from our stats, uh, we care very deeply about cultivating diversity, equity, inclusion on our campus. In addition, as you're thinking about why you might want to get an MBA, I think one of the big selling points for Haas is that uh, compared to many of our peer institutions as a public institution, uh, we have one of the lowest uh, tuition and fee costs for an institution, as well as also based on our own studies, we found that in, in about three years, you get your return on your investment in your MBA degree. And so we want you to really could think about the worthwhile benefit of coming to Haas. In addition, we also have a number of career advantages. Uh, three years post-graduation, we have a strong median salary increase. 93% of students receive graduation, receive offers uh, within three months of graduation. While our candidates go on to work in many different fields, we find that the most candidates go into working in technology, consulting, financial services, CBG, that there are a lot of opportunities that are available at Haas. And you might be asking yourself, well, how do you make all this happen? That there are a number of resources that you have on campus, that particularly at Haas, we have a really robust career management group that really assists you from the moment you start on campus with a career coach. In addition, you also have access to relationship managers 
who are industry specific and really help you find and, and locate uh, internships as well as also uh, employment opportunities. You have a peer advisor network as well as also connection to industry specialists. And that one of the big things about Haas is that we're really big on community. And so it's not just while you're in school, but it's also when you graduate. That Haas has an impressive alumni network that there are 41,000 Berkeley Haas alums all over the world, not just in the Bay Area. We have 46 global chapters, as well as also still having access to nearly 500,000 UC Berkeley alum also located worldwide. That once you're a part of the Haas community, you're also a part of the Berkeley community. So, in thinking about what to expect when you're actually on campus and at Haas, as I've been mentioning, community is a really important part of our process. And that Haas, you should expect to see a third of your classmates coming from outside the United States to add to the diversity of our class. You should expect to have a class of about 300 students, one of the lowest amongst our peer institutions. Uh, we break that 300 student group into four cohorts of 75. And so students learn within a smaller subset in each of their blue, gold, OSCE, or AXE cohort. In addition, we also break that those four cohorts out even further and assign five-person study groups. Uh, for the first semester, that many of those study groups stay together through their two years of study and become fast friends. So if you're thinking about where you might position yourself, your application and thinking about our class profile, uh, here's information about the class of 2021. Uh, in 2021, that class had about 283 students with an average 5.3 years of work experience, although the middle 80 range of our work experience ranged between 3.6 and 8.2 years of work experience. In addition, uh, standardized test scores also a part of the academic profile. We look at both the GMAT and the GRE equally. And so we had an average GMAT of 725, an average GRE verbal of 162, or an average uh, GRE quant score of 161. That you can present either test to us and have your application reviewed. If you're looking, thinking about the curriculum overview, uh, here is what a timeline will look like year, between year one and year two. You should expect that in year one, uh, the primary base of your core coursework will be, the primary base of your coursework will be our core curriculum, that many of the economics courses, uh, financial courses will all be taken in the fall, sem fall semester. We break our fall term up into two parts. So you have fall A and fall B, that by the spring of year one, you'll start taking your electives along with uh, finishing up your core curriculum. And then year two is about exploration and really figuring out and really focusing in on your area of emphasis of what you want to study and thinking about uh, the other opportunities that are available. In addition, we do require students to take an applied innovation course. Um, one of the big changes that we have made in the midst of COVID-19 is that all students will be required to complete an internship. And so those opportunities will be available to you over the course of your academic year. In addition, one of the hallmarks of Haas is experiential learning, that if you're interested in consulting, international business development is a great way to get access to partners from across the world, as well as also to have interactions in uh, real world consulting. If you're interested in entrepreneurship, Lean Launchpad is a great experience that is both curricular and also opportunities to really develop and take your idea for your startup and really move it through the through the path of acceleration and scaling so that you're able to create something that can actually go to market. So what does the admissions process actually look like? So when we talk about the admissions process, there are basically three big buckets we use to kind of look at applicants. We look at your academics and that particularly we talk about academic aptitude. And so what we're ultimately looking for is what's your readiness for the rigor of our core curriculum. Uh, what type of quantitative preparation have you had, both in demonstration between your GMAT or GRE score, as well as also taking a look at your undergraduate transcript and your coursework? What courses have you taken to really show that you could be prepared for our quantitative rigor? In addition, we also take a look at your GPA and think about uh, how, what your academic success has been and what it could be in the future. One of the things I want to stress about Haas uh, that I think um, might get lost in the conversation is that at Haas, we firmly believe that applicants are more than just their numbers. And so, which is why I said that there are multiple buckets that we look at as we look at and evaluate candidates. And so one of these areas doesn't outweigh the other. They all, we use a holistic approach and review all of them equally, but we also look at your professional experiences. What has been your performance relative to your peers in the workforce? When we talk about professional experience, we really focus in on two major ideas. We look at impact and we look at trajectory. 
And so as you think about how you organize and present materials to us, both in your resume, as well as also in the employment section, really think about where you have had impact and where you have shown trajectory and progression in your career and really emphasizing that for our readers. In addition, we do require two letters of recommendation in the, in the general application. We do have a preference that they come from people who have directly supervised you, but we do recognize that there are situations where that may not be the best person to write your letter of recommendation. So we provide a space for you to explain your choices and who you pick, because ultimately you do get to pick whomever it is that you would like to write your letter of recommendation. I think the thing to be mindful of as you, as you create this application and, and do this process is that you'll want to pick people who know you really well, uh, particularly in terms of your work ethic, uh, how you show up in community and your work office, and that you want to be, pick people who have specific examples that they can name and speak to your character and your development as a leader in your institution. So be really thoughtful about who you ask to write your letters of recommendation. And then lastly, we also look at personal qualities. And so when we talk about personal qualities, we, we talk about this idea of culture fit. And for us, our culture fit idea is really grounded in our defining leadership principles as I talked about earlier. That ultimately as the admissions committee, we care deeply about what your passions are, what drives you, what motivates you. Ultimately, we're looking to see how you can be a unique contributor to the Haas community. So the ways that you demonstrate this to us are through your essays and being mindful of presenting an authentic, and story, uh, authentic story that really presents who you are as a person. And then our essays, uh, especially in essay number one, we often get asked, is this personal and professional? And the answer is yes, just make the story about you and really show and demonstrate who you are as a person because that's what we care most about. We also ask about your extracurricular activities, uh, both undergraduate and postgraduate. I wanna highlight here again, that we recognize that not everyone can have a long list of undergraduate extracurricular activities that perhaps you worked part-time. And so you went to school and then you worked part-time and you, you didn't have a lot of clubs you could join. In addition, if you are a working professional who works 80 hours a week, maybe you don't have the time to devote to community service. And so what's really important for you to be thinking about is how you can do the self-reflection and the analysis of your application to recognize your areas of growth and your strengths and own it and name it and talk about it in the application in an optional essay, just to give the readers a sense of, you know that this is a thing that exists that we're going to look at and evaluate, but there's more to your story. And there's a situation where we're not guessing about why it is that you don't have these things, but really you're aware of it, you own it, and you kind of really set the case for why we shouldn't necessarily uh, ding you on your application for not having them. And then lastly, uh, the interview that we require for all uh, admitted students is an important part of the process. That our interviews are generally, com uh, our, our interviews are generally uh, done by current students or alums, and that ultimately both these groups of people are looking to make sure that you are someone they want to have in scholar, they want to be in scholarship with, as well as also someone they want to have in their alumni network. And so you, it's, you have to be really mindful and thoughtful about how you show up in that day and be able to articulate what your vision is and really invest them in a sense of believing in you and your talents. Um, that ultimately it's really about you crafting a sense of what you want and be able to achieve it and how we can help you do that. So as you think about applying for the next cycle, um, our deadline's gonna run pretty similarly to where they've run in the past, that for round one, uh, we're gonna have a deadline of September 24th with decisions coming out December 17th. And round two is gonna be January 14th with decisions coming out March 2nd. Round three, there's gonna, uh, the deadline's gonna be April 5th with decisions coming out May 3rd. In addition, if you're applying through the consortium, you'll have a round one deadline of October 5th with the same notification deadline of December 17th. And if you're applying in round two, uh, you'll have a January 5th deadline for the consortium with the similar, uh, the same notification de decision deadline of March 25th. So as you're thinking about what to do next, there are a number of different opportunities that you have in order to learn more. Um, you can explore our MBA admissions page. I'd recommend going there because there are a number of different opportunities that are available to you. We have an application boot camp, which comes with, it's an online resource to help guide you through the application process. It has uh, mock resumes, it has uh, guides on how to answer the essay questions. In addition, it also comes with a Slack channel where admissions committee representatives will answer questions for you as they come up. In addition, on our website, there's also an uh, opportunity to register for an, uh, a virtual advising session with a member of the admissions team where you get 15 minutes of one-on-one -on -one time to ask questions you have about the admissions process. You get a little bit more understanding of what it is to be at Haas. In addition, I would encourage you to, rec to, to uh, research our areas of emphasis. There are 12 of them. They range from real estate to equity for leadership to uh, technology. 
that that for the most part, what is it you're trying to look to do? There's probably an area at Haas to really help you and connect with you and help you uh, connect with that area. In addition, I would recommend connecting with our students that we can access our Haas student ambassadors at HSA at haas.berkeley.edu. Um, in addition, if you are an international perspective student, you can reach out to our international student representatives. Or if you're someone who's looking at the consortium and you wanna get a sense of what the consortium community is like at Haas, feel free to reach out to our consortium liaisons at uh, ucbconsortium at list.berkeley.edu. I wanna thank you for joining me for this presentation this morning. If you have admissions questions that we're not able to answer, please feel free to reach out to MBA ADM at haas.berkeley.edu. Uh, we're about to transition to answering questions live. And so we look forward to engaging with you more personally and, and giving you a sense of what it is to be at Haas. So it looks like there's a question. Um, are you considering offering virtual classes in the fall or are you planning on resuming in-person visits? Um, currently, the, there is, has not been an announcement of um, the plan that will happen in the fall. Um, it will likely be a hybrid model of um, some small um, group sessions um, that are meeting in person and um, the um, bigger, larger classes would be um, offered remotely via remote learning. Um, and that is, um, but people will have the option to to do only remote learning. Um, really, the the priority of um, the health and safety of our students, our faculty, and our staff is our is a, the number one priority. So we're doing what we can to follow um, our state guidelines um, to keep everybody healthy, healthy and safe. Um, and then in person visits. Um, so in-person visits um, have not um, have been canceled as of now. We do not have um, a, a set time um, when those might resume. Um, we will um, let everybody know as soon as we do resume um, in-person in visits, um, and then our, our whole visitation program. But as of now, we we do we do not have a um, a set time or date when that might happen. Have any of the internships been affected by COVID-19? If so, which industries? Um, I don't know that an, in, an industry in particular has been um, affected in the COVID-19 situation. I know that there certainly there have been um, internships that have been affected. Um, at Haas, um, actually our, our alumni, and this is a testament to the strength of our community, um, our alumni have been um, so helpful and supportive of our, um, of our current students and if um, somebody has been affected with their internship, uh, if one of our students has been affected, um, our, our alumni has, have been very supportive in providing um, opportunities um, as an alternative um, to anybody who has um, been affected by the COVID-19 situation. Anthony, do you want to take this one? Sure. Uh, so Amika from Atlanta, Georgia asks, does having a PhD before applying for the MBA impact my chances? So the answer to your question is uh, no. Having more education isn't necessarily a negative impact of, uh, of your application. Uh, we do look for understanding what your purpose in getting an MBA is in addition to that degree. So you want to be really explicit about what your goals and what your purpose is. And then secondly, uh, we have a question about with over 10 years of experience with increasing engineering leadership roles, will B38 cost me? And so I ask this question a lot about age. And one of the things I try to stress is that um, it's we can't actually answer that question as it's written because it would be discrimination to say that being 38 would impact an admissions decision. And ultimately, when we talk about our class, we talk about our students, where we see there being a line is really about having tenure of experience, what's been your impact and what's been your trajectory in your career, which is one of the key factors we use. And that ultimately, we don't care about your age. We really care about where you sit in your work and how you progress in your job and that you can show some progression 
that would be a stronger play on your application as opposed to how long you've been there, how old you are. So this question is written to me directly, so I'll answer it. Um, Haas seems to have a very uh, heavy, clean tech focus. Do you see this translate into recruiting opportunities for Haas graduates? And so, uh, yes, we actually just met with the Energy Institute at Haas and got a, a broad overview of the Haas energy options. There are a number of different areas you can actually flow into in that center. I would say that you have the benefit of thinking about clean tech and, and being in Silicon Valley where a lot of these things are originating, but there are also places on the East Coast that are still doing that work. And I think that if you go on LinkedIn and you do a search of who's working at what institutions, you probably will run across a number of Haas graduates uh, listed as employees there. So uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Anthony. Question that says, I saw that Haas offered a Cal Advantage application for Cal alumni this past application cycle. Will this or a similar expedited application be offered to Cal alumni this cycle? So Hayden, thank you for your question. As of right now, uh, there is not a decision to move forward with offering Cal Advantage in the next cycle. Not to say that that can't change in the future. Uh, but for right this second, July, June 30th will be the last Cal Advantage application we are we will see for the immediate future. So somebody's asking, do you consider candidates with less than two years of work experience as the work experience is strongly being being affected by the pandemic? Um, so we look at work experience as one portion of the whole application. Um, it is um, rare that we would um, admit somebody with less than two years of work experience, but we do look at the work experience um, as a whole and see um, if there has been um, strong progression through your work experience, um, what you've actually done in those few years that you've had, um, that you've been working. Um, have you had um, really, you know, strong experience in a certain project or, um, you know, have you been, you know, have you started your own company and have been um, working to grow your company? So it, it's a very um, um, individual question to to look at that we would we would look at each um, application individually to to look at those years of work experience. Um, but I would say that it would be rare that we would admit somebody with less than two years of work experience. So Olga has a question, in terms of career orientation, does Haas different, different from other tech MBA programs? Um, I would say Haas's big differentiator is um, would be our location, um, given our proximity to um, the Silicon Valley and the, the tech hub of the Bay Area. Um, we have a lot of opportunities for um, speakers to come, guest speakers to come on campus. Um, and many of them are coming from um, nearby companies in the Bay Area. Um, and just given our proximity is, um, I would say, a big differentiator to other programs um, in the, the tech industry. So we have a question about what would the impact of the deferrals be on the 2021 intake? So uh, we are allowing international students who are uh, who might have visa issues due to COVID-19 defer for a year to join the next class. And so this would have a negative impact on the number of seats available in the class of 2021. Um, but one of the things I try to, to buffer that answer with is by saying, uh, at, we care deeply about the strength of profile of our class. And so we would take the strongest candidates regardless um, and thinking about building the next class. So if you have a strong pro profile that you have looked at compared to our sets that are online, don't feel concerned about applying in the next year.
So Chandler's asking, um, can you illustrate some of the teaching or research assistantships that are available to students? Um, yeah, so we, um, in the mostly in our in the second year, students um, can apply to what's known as um, GSR or um, um, GSI appointments, um, which are um, graduate um, student instructor or graduate student researcher um, assistantships. And um, they are basically teaching assistant um, roles that um, you can apply to. And um, the you are they are, these are paid positions, so they will help um, offset tuition costs. Um, and they are a number of different roles throughout the campus um, that you can apply to. So we have a question from Tina who graduated with UC Berkeley and who wants to understand how the MBA classes are ran differently from the undergrad Haas classes or what addition color would Haas MBA bring to the experience? And so Tina, to answer your question, it's one of the big reasons why we have a strong focus in work experience. We find that as graduate students that you bring something different to the table having been a professional and have conversations about what your work like have work life has been. And then as someone who has worked with both undergraduates and, and is now working with graduates, there is a different feeling and an establishment and, and having community with someone who is older um, compared to if you were looking at the undergraduate program. And I would also say that the graduate program probably offers a lot more opportunities to specialize. And if you take a look at the 12 areas of emphasis for the MBA, that those are areas that, especially after you've worked, you kind of have a sense of, I care really deeply about this. And I want a stronger sense of how to make this vision happen for myself. Um, the next question, what would you say is the aspect that makes Haas Alumni Network different from other business schools? Um, so I wouldn't say it's one in particular aspect that makes um, that differentiates the Haas Alumni Network. Um, I would say the community um, that is built up um, while at the two years um, at, at Haas um, is really um, the strength of the alumni community as well. Um, they, the alumni um, feel very connected to the school and I think that is um, completely built on the foundation of our um, defining leadership principles that strengthens our culture um, and, the, and our community. And um, the, the Haas Alumni Network, I think, um, is in particular very strong in the Bay Area, given our location. And um, I think the proximity from our school to the Bay Area and, um, you know, just being able to um, reach out to our alums and um, possibly meet up with them for coffee um, just is um, another strength to the alumni network that um, might differ from other business schools that may, you know, not be as um, close in location to um, to where a lot of the alumni are physically located. So we have a question about the admissions essays from the last cycle. Um, we are in the midst of reviewing the application. And so the new application will be ready to roll out within a couple of weeks. I don't know definitively, uh, we have not publicly announced uh, what the application is going to have on it. So it's one of those wait and see. So we have a, a question that says, the school's representation speaks for itself. That said, is there anything you think it could do better? Um, one of the things I think is really important to, to state and kind of reemphasize about Haas is that uh, we are constantly doing self-reflection analysis and thinking about how we can be better. Um, I, I loosely mentioned talking about our uh, diversity, equity, inclusion. And then three years ago, we worked on a diversity action plan that we have been continually revising, reviewing, and enacting ways in order to make Haas better. And so I think one of the things of coming to Haas is that that's the essential question of how you can actually innovate and be better. And so it's the core of everything that we're doing.
So we have a question about scholarships and fellowships. And so are scholarships and fellowships awarded primarily based on work experience, academic aptitude, or do to fit Haas's core values and personal qualities also play a significant part? So what I would say is that there are a number of opportunities to, uh, to receive scholarships and fellowships. Um, you are, we do have both merit scholarships at the, as a part of the admissions process, as well as also uh, need-based scholarships. In addition, there are also private foundational scholarships that are all Haas-based uh, that are also opportunities. And then thinking about fellowships, uh, there we do offer some fellowships to the consortium, uh, which would enable, uh, which has a strong values, core values and personal qualities alignment to Haas. And so I think the answer to the question is that there's a mix, that there are a number of different opportunities to receive scholarship and fellowships from Haas based on a number of different factors. Um, Josh is asking, is there a veteran network at, in Haas and how does Haas evaluate those with military experience? Um, yes, there's a very um, active um, veterans network at Haas. Um, there's the Veterans Club. Um, you can find their um, website on our website. Um, and um, they are more than happy to talk to prospective students as well, the current students in the club. So please re reach out to them. They're um, a great resource um, in the application process. Um, and Haas evaluates um, military experience. Um, so we evaluate um, people with um, similar work experience um, as a pool. So um, people in the military experience will be read um, by a um, reader who has military experience um, and understands the um, experience that you might have. So we have a question about what kind of clubs or other resources does Haas have to help somebody looking for a near future in consulting? And so as I mentioned in the presentation, we have a career manager group that really helps you identify internship as well as also employment opportunities and make connections. We also have a number of student clubs that are both uh, industry-based as well as also um, personal interest-based. And that there is a consulting club that you can join to get access to resources as well as also help in furthering your career. Question, will an increase in deferrals for the class of 21 imply that the intake of international students the following year will necessarily be lesser? Um, I mean, it's hard to say at this point, we still don't know exactly how many people we will have deferring um, or if, you know, if that's even a significant number, um, we are, um, we will look to see what the class of 21 will look like um, as applications come in. Um, so we can't really, answer that without knowing um, the, the numbers of deferrals. So we have a question about, are there any full-time professionals who work part-time or still run their company while they are in school? So I would say at Haas, we have a number of different MBA programs. So if you're looking to continue to work while you're in study, uh, we do have a evening weekend or working professionals program that would be available so that you can still continue that path. Um, the expectation is that if you're coming to the full-time program, you're going to commit to school full-time and that ultimately we would, we would discourage you from trying to work full-time and doing the full-time MBA program. But you still have access to the Working Professionals program. So we have a question about does Haas consider second MBA aspirants? If yes, what do you recommend the application stress on the application? And so the answer to your question is that I'm assuming that you wanna get a second MBA and based on the, the regulations from our graduate division at UC Berkeley, if you already have an MBA degree, you cannot receive a second MBA degree. Um, that would exclude you from actually applying to our program. So we have had this question come up now for a third time. Um, can you talk about how the current COVID-19 deferrals will impact the accepted class of 2023? Will there be lesser spots available for new applicants? And so, uh, as I have said before, 
Um, they, and as Nicole just said, we don't know, the, we can't speak with specificity about the class of 2023 yet, uh, but ultimately it, it, we will see. Do you have any, so there's a question, do you have any paths and classes designed for a career in development finance institutions such as international finance institution, investment branch of the World Bank? Um, I'm not sure if we actually have a class in development finance, um, but certainly we have um, our, uh, our students, our students move on um, to, positions in um, development finance, especially, you know, the World Bank or the IMF. Um, but I'm not certain about an actual class. I, I don't know, Anthony, do you know if there, we have a class in that? I don't know specifically. We have a question about uh, speak to the student professor relationship at Berkeley. I would actually point you to connect with our students to give you a better perspective about how they connect with faculty. Um, I have a third person overview of it that wouldn't be authentic to the experience. And we have this question already. So we have a question about, is it still a good time to apply to Haas MBA without standardized test score for current year intake? Will an Indian candidate be offered application fee waiver? So answer the first part of the question is, um, unless you're currently applying to Cal Advantage, uh, you need to apply with a standardized test score. Uh, that is a requirement of our application process. In addition, if you're applying from abroad and you were not educated in the United States, either through an undergraduate or master's degree, you also still have to have a TOEFL or out score to validate your application. And so we ask, has a question about, will Indian candidate be offered um, application fee waiver? And so uh, that has a little bit more specificity that you need to connect with us at MBA ADM at hosta.berkeley.edu to talk about fee waivers uh, specifically. So it looks as though we have reached the end of the questions that are in. We want to thank you for joining us this morning um, and feel free to connect with us, as I mentioned in our slide in our presentation, um, for other opportunities to kind of get more of your questions answered or really get a sense of what it is to be at Haas.